Hey guys, welcome back. It's Shelby and today what we are doing is taking a normal glass vase like the kind that comes with a bouquet or you can buy them super cheap from the store. They're just clear, pick a shape you like, and we're going to turn it into a really cool decorative vase. Not the kind that you put flowers in like it currently is, but the kind that you just sit on a bookshelf or a table and it's just beautiful in and of itself. And how we're going to do that is taking two colors of paint. I like a simple palette for this craft. One is, and I cannot pronounce this, Phthalo, P-H-T-A-L-O, blue. <laughs> so it's kind of like a deeper blue. It's almost, almost an indigo, I think, but it's like a deep blue. And then white, I'm using acrylic paint. You're also going to need a thin brush and a big fat brush and your vase, of course. And that's all you need to make a beautiful faux ceramic vase made out of glass. We're gonna start with the blue. Let's get going. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing here in just a second, but I wanted to get started and get a little base down so that what I'm saying makes sense and you can see it. Okay, I have a good start. I want to show you what I'm doing. Basically, I'm starting with the top of my tree and what I'm doing is bringing my brush in that's covered in paint and just pushing it against the glass like that to create little upward stripes. Just tapping it like do 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 and I'm making it into tree forms. It's going to be a thicker blue at the top, lesser blue at the bottom, and I'm just creating that cypress tree shape. Um, basically just a row, another row, tiny row underneath, and we're going to swipe down for the stem. It's basically that easy. Just speeding this part up so you guys can see what I'm doing, but also not spend a lot of time on it. So the important thing here is to not hit anything with the brush on your way out. You can see the top of my first tree there. Um, another thing that I want to do is just make sure that I'm pushing the brush and not swiping it because you can see the brush strokes on here. And so the little itty bitty presses against the glass create a form of texture that make it look more like leaves. Also one thing I didn't mention at the beginning that I did do was I like ran a cloth around the inside of the vase just to make sure it wasn't dusty. Um, so you're going to need to make sure you do that and then also pick a vase that's big enough that your hand can fit into or just get like a really short brush or a bendy brush or something. I don't even know if they make those, but uh, yeah. This tree is looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna add a few more leaves and the stem and the grass beneath it and we'll be almost done with this one. So I went top to bottom in the tree to get the textured leaves I want and then two swipes for the trunk and branch. There you go, you guys. So that is one tree, all the leaves, branch, trunk, and just like four or five little Tiny shoots of grass at the bottom, that's all I want. I'm going for a very minimalistic look on this tree. I'm gonna add a couple more around the base of the vase in the exact same painting method that you just saw. And then we're gonna let it dry, fill in the white, and you're gonna have a gorgeous faux ceramic vase uh, just put out to be decorative. I wouldn't necessarily put water in it, but I think it's gonna turn out beautifully. Since you guys saw how I did the first tree and I'm doing the exact same technique, I don't want to take up too much time with the second, third, and fourth tree. I want to show you guys like kind of doing them from scratch a little bit and I have a couple like things to intercede here and there. But for the most part, I just want to um, kind of do an overview of how I'm doing it because when you do it yourself, you're kind of going to get a feel for it as it is. And uh, yeah, let's get on with the project. I'm gonna try and do the last tree, at least start it facing you guys so you can see what I'm doing. We'll see how it works out. This is not working out, but you can see how I'm just pushing the brush against the glass to create that texture. You can't actually see it because there's a tree immediately behind it and it's clear. There we go, just like that. All right, that's really hard. I'm going to turn it around from my viewpoint, but uh, I want to show you guys what I was doing. Just finishing up the fourth and final tree really quickly, and then we can move on to the rest of the vase. Okay, guys, so the trees are painted, and they look pretty darn good. You're really going to see them pop once the white's in there. Uh, what I like about it, though, is that it's got the darker marks up at the top where there's more paint, and a little bit more sheer where the paint thinned out. This is just because of the way I was pushing the brush in, but it really allows for that leafy texture as opposed to just like one big blob. If it's all a really thick glob of paint, you can't really get the beautiful, delicate, lacy nature of tree leaves. So that's why those are important. 
I really like this as the base of the jar. I'm gonna let this start to dry and uh, figure out what I wanna do for the top of the jar. All right, so I've been looking at this and I think I figured out what I wanna do. These trees are so beautiful down here. I wanted to bring that element up here, but I don't really want floating trees. I don't know, that just seems kind of strange to me. But up here needs something, right? So what I'm gonna do is color block just from the base of the vase here. And then in here, I'm gonna bring in that stippling motion from the top of the tree leaves just to see what it looks like. I think I'm gonna like it. I hope I like it, but the top of the vase will be blue and kind of really cool stippled pattern. And then it'll go down into these beautiful trees down here. So that's what we're gonna try. And I'm going to basically pick a spot on the outside of the edge, put my brush in where I want it and spin the base of the vase with trying not to let any wiggle in my pinky go so that the brush hits the same spot the whole way around. We'll see if it works. Brush is down, there's no turning back now. It's okay if the top is wobbly, but the bottom's gotta be pretty flat. Okay, not bad, not bad. Already like it better with something up at the top there. That was a good call. Now's the easy part. Now it's just stippling on the blue, which I know how to do. Super, super simple. So uh, I can actually face the camera for this one, which is great. Just gonna start Getting it in with tiny little brush strokes going down to my line. And do you know what? I've decided I'm not gonna do a hard line. I'm just gonna let these stippled brush strokes slightly go past the line, but use it as a guide of where to stop. And if you're wondering if I made that decision just now because my brush slipped and went lower than the line, yes, yes I did, but you know what? It's gonna look great. That's how most of my crafts go. I mess something up and then I'm like, well, this is the new reality. So this is a lot easier to kind of see the detail of what I'm doing. I'm spreading it out a lot, but I'm literally just tapping the brush. But when you do it really tight and close together, it creates a really cool lacy look. I'm really committing to it before I've like even turned the jar around to like see if I like it. But like I said, this is the new reality for this one. I really like the muted color palette for this craft. I think it's really beautiful. Trees in general, I think are just really beautiful and lovely and elegant as far as a focal point to make an art piece on. Their leaves are super lacy. The silhouette of them is very simple, but they're actually very complex if you look at them. Like, I love that. I think it's just a gorgeous display of nature's intricacies. So I really like the idea of doing a project based on trees. And I really love the simplicity of blue and white, even though trees are green for the most part, um, unless it's fall or winter or something. I really think that taking the silhouette and complexity of the laciness of the tree leaves and putting them in another color, one such as a really classic deep blue, is just a gorgeous, beautiful, elegant way to represent those trees and make it look like a high form of art. Um, but at the same point in time, drawing that inspiration from nature without it being photorealistic and a picture of nature, it's just more the inspiration of it. And I really love that. I think it's going to turn out beautifully. I can't wait for it. I'm super excited. Plus we're almost done. So yay fast craft. Well, relatively fast. Okay, here we go. Just closing up the final gaps. And one last one. The tricky part is making sure that you get all the strokes going upwards. At some point you get lazy and the brush starts to go side to side. Can't let that happen. Nope, it's gotta be uniform all the way around for this to work. And I'm leaving some of the parts with the darker paint on them. They're just gonna show more texture when it's all said and done, so I'm not worried about it. This is the first part of the vase. It's already looking amazing. I'm super excited for it. I'm gonna let this dry and uh, come back when it is all set for phase two. Hey guys, so the blue is all dry. And it looks amazing. It's so pretty. I think if I tilt it, you can kind of see some of the details um, up here, but we're ready to put the white in. And I discovered something. This white is almost empty and I have a brand new white tube of acrylic paint somewhere, probably parting with my paint palette. So gone for now. So I'm gonna hope there's enough white in here. Um, basically, I just want to make sure that the paint is dry so that I'm not smearing it and it looks like it is. So I'm just going to uh, put some white in here. I'm going to coat the entire inside of the vase so I'm not super worried about it going in delicately. Oh no, oh no, none came out. Okay, hold up. I can do this. There's going to be enough. I know it. 
There we go, there we go. That's a lot. We're gonna start with that and I'll leave the rest in the tube for touch-ups. I gotta get some more paint. I can't run out of paint. Big brush, gonna go in and just kind of coat the inside and be delicate of the blue that's already on it. You can scratch it off. What I love so much about this craft is because the paint goes on the inside, it's a really cool look and the glass just makes it shiny and like ceramic looking. But seriously, look at this. Like look at the paint go up the jar or the vase. It's just so cool. And look at what it does to that tree. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Really makes it pop. Like this is stunning, people. Absolutely beautiful. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. There's sometimes, honestly, when I'm crafting where I just impress myself, and this is one of those times, like this is beautiful. And I'm running out of white paint. This could be a big problem, big, big problem. So I'm gonna put the rest of the paint in there and just hope for a miracle. There we go. I know I have another tube around. I'm gonna have to find it. Look at this, look. Look at the money shot right there. Oh, it's just so cool. This works exactly as it did in my head. I get super excited when crafts do that because like I have this idea of something I wanna do and that's something that I want to work and how I want it to look when it's done. And like 70% of the time it does, but it fails enough that when it does look good that I get ecstatic. But like seriously, you can see the top of the jar, just the blue versus where we put the white over it. Oh, game changer, so gorgeous. And I think the top is gonna be even more stunning when we get that white on there, but I wanna make sure I have enough for the inside first. Okay guys, good news. While I was searching for this, which is just a makeup sponge that I'm gonna use to finish off the inside of the vase, I found my palette, which is an old uh, Benefit makeup palette uh, from when I used to work for Benefit. This was uh, one of the launches that we would put makeup on or whatever, but it looks like a paint palette. So I kept it like a paint palette and um, it's pretty awesome. You can see I, I use it quite a bit. So I found this. I also found white paint. It's not the white paint I was looking for. I was looking for another tube that looked like this, but you know what? I'll take it. It's the same color, it's the same type of white, and it's gonna work. So we are going to finish off this tube with the makeup sponge because I can fit my whole hand in this vase, which means I can apply the white around the corners with the makeup sponge. When in doubt, adapt to your circumstances. I'm gonna dip the brush and do the top of the vase. And then what I'm gonna do is just let it dry and do a second coat so that it looks beautiful before the final reveal. Here is the top of the vase and we're just gonna go, ooh, look at that. A Little bit of color saturation, which is awesome. When I was painting the blue on, I was very careful to take it off the top lip. Like it's a thicker bead of glass around the very top of the vase and I made very, sure to run my nail underneath it and pull it off with my hand. And the reason I did that is the top of the vase is now clear. When I paint white on it, it's gonna look like this pristine line of white. And since there's no other pristine lines on the vase, I thought that would be a really beautiful contrast. I just point to make it look really like professional and elegant and like the un pristine lines were all a choice rather than me not being able to do a straight line on the vase, which is totally what actually happened. Uh, but yeah, I just thought that would be a really neat, nice final touch. And also if we are making a faux ceramic vase, it makes sense that the underlying color would be white instead of clear. So I'm gonna finish that up and uh, yeah, we're gonna get get this vase painted and show you kinda, kinda what it looks like when it's all done. So I'm sure this will shock you guys, but something unexpected is happening. I don't think the blue up at the top was dried 100%, and as I'm putting the white on, it's pulling the blue up in these really crazy patterns and displacing it. So I already have a little bit of white on there, and I'm just gonna do another brush so you can kind of see what it's doing. Do you see how it's like breaking it up and bringing it up with the white? It's like shifting it all up, but honestly, this is cooler than anything I could have done intentionally. Look at that. That is the neatest effect ever. And I love that it didn't really do it to my trees too bad. My trees still look really good and I'm gonna be like super careful to keep them that way when I go over and touch up the details. But that is stunning. That took this piece to the next level. I love that it did that. I love it so much. Like that's so exciting. That, that was what was intended, right? Fine, cute, would have loved it. Like super on point with my vision. 
That is something I couldn't even have expected or thought to want or to ask for. It's gorgeous. So this is perfect. We're gonna finish out the white on the top, then go back in and finish up the details inside. But uh, yeah, so we're just gonna paint it over this. I'm not even pushing that hard. I think it just like wasn't dry enough. So there we go. I was wondering, because when I was painting it, I noticed little uh, bubbles popping up. So I wanna be really careful to always go in upward strokes now that I know what's doing it. Because if I go in sideways strokes, I'm gonna have a whole different look on my hands. And I don't really want that. I want the upward strokes. So uh, yeah, that's just so neat. Like that is such a neat look. I love this so much. So here's the idea of the base. Like basically done all the way through. Super cool. Honestly, like this blue right here is not destroyed enough. As bad as that sounds. So I'm gonna go over it again and just kind of make it go go up a little bit because look how much cooler that is. Oh my goodness. Okay, where's the blue there? Yeah, that can stay down a little bit. This one we're just gonna we're just gonna pull a little bit. Like it's down there, we're just gonna pull it up. I love that. Oh my goodness. I love that so much. I can't even express it. Like this is so cool. Like over here it's not pulled up enough for my taste anymore. Here we go. That's awesome. Okay, so now the plan is to let this dry, go back in, finish up the white without changing anything because this is a stunning, stunning neck of the vase. Very carefully touch up the white around the trees because you can see it's like, well, in the lights you can't really tell, but there's some uh, see-throughness, so it gives away the illusion of the ceramics and I don't want that. I can touch that up and then show you the final reveal. Okay guys, so it is the next day, hence the change in hair and clothes, but I wanted to let the vase dry overnight and now it's all dry and I wanna show it to you because it turned out so well, it's absolutely beautiful. So this is the vase, how it turned out. You'll notice it's super beautiful and shiny because we painted the inside of the glass. So that beautiful shine on the outside that makes it look like just this beautiful, lustrous, ceramic is really just the clear glass on the outside of the paint. It also means you can touch it anywhere you want, scratch it with your fingernail, none of the paint's coming off, so it's super nice. Obviously you can't like hit it hard or break it because it's glass, but I love it. I think it's absolutely stunning. My favorite part, honestly, is the neck. Like this turned out so beautifully. I'm not gonna lie, I was not expecting the paint to like reactivate and drag the blue with it but I'm really, really excited that it did because it's just a stunning effect. The trees turned out beautifully. Honestly, it didn't do it much to the trees at all. I think just because like I went over it more quickly and up here I was really like brushing it up and as soon as I noticed it moving, I decided I liked the effect and I like tried to make it do it more with my paintbrush by putting on more paint. So I think that's what happened. But I'm gonna do some close-ups at the end so you can really see the details in the leaves of the trees because the way I applied the blue I think is really pretty and turned out really well. And I also wanna show you some details of the neck of the vase because I think this turned out beautifully. Honestly, this is one of those crafts that just turns out even better than you expect. And I just get so excited for those moments and those crafts. And this is definitely one of those. So I really enjoyed making this craft and sharing it with you guys. And hope you enjoyed uh, watching and joining me for this one. Thanks so much for joining me here, guys. Uh, consider subscribing if you haven't. I'd love to see you here again soon. Bye for now. So this is a close-up of the vase neck. You can see just the different variations of blue. It's deeper where I really stippled on the blue paint and then the white kind of washed it away in this broken pattern. That's just absolutely stunning. This is a 360 of it, so you can kind of get the full effect. Super, super beautiful. And then down here, I have the trees. You can see the different lacy patterns that pushing on the blue really made. And then the white did wash it away a little bit, but honestly, because it's such a lacy effect, the little cracks and everything, like they just go with it. They're just beautiful. Like it created this little knot in the tree that I couldn't even have thought to paint. Like it's absolutely stunning. It turned out super, super well.